What is up, coordinators and naturals? I am just a simple new type. And in this episode, we are diving back into the conflict in the Asian bloc during the Second Alliance Plant War in CE-73. Last time, we learned that Serpent Tail was helping out the Asian bloc where one gorilla named Trojan pilots the green frame. He comes to the base and begins fighting Guy in the blue frame third. In this episode, Trojan's actions get someone he cares about killed. He will also start working with both Zaft and EA to begin bringing peace towards the gorillas. Also, Low will give the green frame a slight weapons upgrade. So let's get into this. Guy and Trojan continue their fight. Guy is one hell of a fighter, but Trojan is able to dodge most of his attacks. Everyone notices that his mobile suit has AI-assisted capabilities. Reed tells the team that it is clearly the natural-based operating system developed by Orb. This is the operating system that Kira Yamato helped complete during his visit to Orb, which eventually was integrated with the M1 Astray and Strike Rouge. But this version seems to be better than the stock operating system. Only one person has the ability to do this. It was low. Zaft receives intel that a gorilla has engaged in an attack at an EA base. Leons thinks that he could use this to his advantage and get rid of both the Alliance and the gorillas before Sue arrives. Remember, Leons is a natural working with Zaft forces to help fight against the Socius clones who are genetically created to never hurt naturals. More intel comes in, he is frightened. It seems Sue is going to engage the gorillas before coming to the Zaft base. He fears for what happens when Sue is left alone. Back at the battle, Guy asks Trojan if he ever considered why he was given that unit. Lo is like a less horny golden boy. When he helps you, you know it is for good reasons. So if Trojan has an astray unit, it must be for a good reason. However, Trojan simply wants to battle. He is too arrogant and thinks his operating system will save him. But Guy is able to see a weak spot and takes the opportunity to attack his unit. Trojan's green frame goes down as he passes out. He wakes up in a jail cell to find Loretta and Kazahana giving him some food to eat. He sees both EA and Zaft as the enemy, but Kazahana says that he should try to solve a problem rather than starting by labeling people enemies. Just wants to kill him, but Guy thinks that his unit will be key to protecting this area. Lucas seems to be more on Guy's wavelength than Just. As Orb is neutral and isolated, their mobile suits are designed for defensive measures. The green frame is no different. This is also the reason that he lost the battle. Guy knew this and took advantage of it, while Trojan just tried to use raw strength to win. As Kazahana and Loretta talk to Trojan, Elijah comes rushing in. He first wonders why Kazahana and Loretta are inside the jail cell with him. He came down to let Trojan know that one of the guerrilla villages is going up in flames. Just, Lucas, Guy, and Socius head out to protect the guerrilla base. Just doesn't really want to help, but they have no choice considering they have their strongest mobile suit locked away on their base, so most likely they have no defenses. They go in and attack, but they notice a Kerberos Zaku warrior is destroying an Astray JG Custom. This is piloted by Sue. As the Zaku destroys the civilian Astray, out of the cockpit comes Barry Ho. He is able to jump out in time. Sue gets out of his mobile suit and asks Barry about his fighting style. He wants to see it for himself, and the two begin fighting with their fists. Back at the base, Trojan wants to go out and fight, but they don't want want to put him in harm's way. He is upset for putting himself in this position. He thinks of his master, Barry Ho. A voice says, let him pilot his mobile suit. Out of nowhere comes Lo. He wants to upgrade the green frame. Barry is still fighting Sue. The artist of this manga makes the dude look very stretchy looking. Sue penetrates Barry with his fist. Just and Lucas come to find two people just punching one another. They use Vulcans on Sue, but he jumps back in his mobile suit and runs away. Guy recognizes the injured Barry Ho. Back at the Zaf base, their repair bill is going up like crazy. Leons looks at his arms astray and says that they won't be able to destroy this unit. Meanwhile, back at the EA base, Lo creates the twin sword rifle. We talked about this a little bit last episode. But this is a 3-in-1 weapon that could be a beam rifle, twin axe, and a twin beam sword. This is the Swiss Army Knife of beam rifles. They finally allow Trojan to head out in the green frame. He finds Guy watching over Barry's dead body. He blames himself for being irresponsible for not being there for him. Back at the base, Leons is chastising Sue for going out on his own. He states that his mission always has been to wipe out the opposition. To Leons, he just views everything in dollars, and Sue sees this. He gets back into his Kerberos 
Zaku warrior and takes off towards the EA base. They get word that Sue is heading towards them, just is hot-headed and decides to go out in a Sigu assault against direct orders. He really wants to fight Sue and the Zaku. The two engage in battle. Lo suggests that the Sigu pilot has his heart only half in the battle. Elijah and three Socius launch as well. Lucas also launches and is Strike E with the IWSP pack. When using the IWSP, the Strike E can also be equipped with either the Strike or Dual Gundam's beam rifle, as it is optional handheld weapon. Trojan decides that he is going to go and talk to Zaft. He isn't going to be hot-headed anymore, and he is going to try to do what is best for his village. He wants to begin opening communication up with both EA and Zaft. After his fight with Guy, he will try to use his words when approaching Zaft. Gist continues his battle with Sue. Lucas comes in to help out Gist. He says two heads are better than one. Get it? Because the Kerbero Saku warrior has more than one head? Nope, still dumb. The two double team Sue, but he is able to hold his own against the two. Lucas says that he is the one that he is looking for, and the two melee one another. He is somewhat ominous as he asks Sue if he wants to fight more freely. Sue retreats. Jis goes to chase, but Lucas tells him to see the bigger picture. Jist is unsure what he is planning. Guy and Trojan go to the Zaft base to try to talk. Some Zaft soldiers tease Trojan, but Leon tells them to shut up. He seems to be over commanding coordinators. The two try to talk peace. Fujiyama is heading in to finally bring supplies to the EA base. Meanwhile, Lucas, Gist, and three Socius are walking through the jungle with Lucas taking the lead. Back at EA, Guy returns to the base. He lets Lo know that Zaft and the gorillas are working out negotiations as they speak. The two look at one of Fujiyama's latest creations, the Raigo Gundam. The GAT FJ-108 Raigo Gundam is a Fujiyama mobile suit that was built off the Strike E Gundam. It could use striker packs and is equipped with variable phase shift armor. What makes this unit unique is its three Acteon Industry striker packs. The Speculum striker pack is similar to the L striker pack. Unlike the L striker, this thing is heavy and could add on missile pods, beam sabers, and more without losing too much speed. The Calibran striker is a close combat striker pack. It uses the Panzer Eisen Kai rocket anchor and a beam boomerang stored in its forearm along with a very big sword. The Sunbullet striker pack is a heavy weapon striker pack that uses a planned Sabbat bazooka similar to the Calamity Gundam. It also has an A-tube missile launcher on the back and a hyper impulse beam cannon. The Raigo is equipped with a CIWS, a 57 millimeter high energy beam rifle, a shield, and a Schneider combat knife. Lo mentions that with Guy in this unit, he doesn't think anyone would be able to hold on for long. Guy responds by saying he would prefer to not be in a position where he would have to hold out long to begin with. Just Lucas and Socius head out towards a meeting place to meet with Zaf to continue with peace talks when suddenly they stumble across Sue once again. He takes out the strikey's arm. Sue begins fighting Lucas once again. For a moment, Sue made him experience fear. When they go to meet with Leons, they tell him that they were attacked by a Zaft soldier. He is piloting his arms astray. The PMC 1L Arms Astray PMC Custom is a modified civilian astray DSSD custom. This unit is originally designed more as a mobile worker, but Leons completely customized the unit for combat. It has enhanced sensors in the head for sniping, Extra power has been added to the propulsion system for longer use than the civilian astray. He is with Alec, who is in his Kerberos Baku. He acknowledges it is Sue and tells them that Zaft now considers them a deserter. He apologizes, but Gist is once again hot-headed and begins attacking. During the skirmish, Lucas takes out Alex's Baku and Leon's destroys Strikey's arm. Trojan in the green frame comes in and yells at them, I leave for one minute and you assholes begin fighting. Trojan probably. Back at the EA base, Lo is fighting Sue. He is able to jump into the cockpit of the Raigo Gundam equipped with the Speculum Striker Pack. As he tries to make his escape, Guy in the Blue Frame 3rd comes in to stop him. And that will do it for this episode. Peace talks are underway, but Gist and Lucas, who work under Fujiyama, are making things worst for everyone. The Astrayverse is my favorite part of the Cosmic Era, but this section of Frame Astrays is somewhat of a lull, and the art direction is quite chaotic. I had to reread some pages as the flow of the action was weird, and I didn't even initially notice that Alex's Baku was destroyed. The chaotic nature of Gist also isn't a character development, it is just a trait. So having him be hot-headed over and over again doesn't really do anything for the viewer, nor does it really give any more information about the character. He will get just the tiniest of character development next time, however. Also, the translations are quite old. The spelling of Lucas and Sue's name and things are a little inconsistent. 
Hopefully Logan of Trafalgar Log will retranslate this one soon. If you like our Astray coverage, go thank him. He is keeping the Astrayverse alive in 2024. In our next episode, we will conclude our coverage of Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Frame Astrays. Jis and Lucas's bloodlust for Zaft will get the better of them. Guy will have to go up against Lucas, while Trojan in the green frame goes up against Sue. But that will do it for now, coordinators. Remember to listen to your master, or you might get them killed. Peace.